The topic in this video is rational expressions. In this video, we will discuss evaluating rational expressions, and we will be discussing domain of rational expressions. So first of all, let's start with what is a rational expression, or what is a rational? So the word rational it means that a number can be written as a fraction. So for example, 4 fifths is rational. It is a fraction. The number 6 is rational because it could be rewritten as 12 over 2. This is a fraction. There's a numerator and a denominator that has the value of 6. So anything that can be written with a numerator and denominator is considered rational. So in this chapter, we're talking about rational expressions. So that means it's going to contain variables. We'll see variables in the numerator and perhaps denominator as well. And just to review something we've talked about before, remember when the denominator of a fraction is zero, so when the denominator is zero, we call that undefined. So if we look at our first three examples, it says evaluate the following function. Round two decimal places if necessary. So if we look at example one, it says find f of negative four. So we know from talking about this previously that this negative four is telling us what to plug in in place of x. And then we know that we need to use our order of operations, PEMDAS. First is grouping, parentheses. So we have to solve the entire numerator before we can divide the denominator. So if we start with the numerator, we're going to do exponents first. So we have negative 4 to the second power. So that would be 16 here. And then we have multiplication here and here. So we have 3 times 16 and then negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20. And then lastly, we have the addition and subtraction here. So we would have 48 plus 20 is 68, and negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Now that we have a numerator and we have a denominator, now we can divide 68 divided by negative 6. And when we divide that, a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And our calculator will say 11.3333, etc. The 3 is repeating. Well, it tells us to round to two decimal places, so that means we need two numbers. So we have to go to the third number, though, and check if this is 5 or higher. And since it is not 5 or higher, then it's just going to be negative 11.33, about negative 11.33. Okay, so if we take a look at the next example, this time we're going to replace x with 2. So again, we're going to do the exponent first, so we would have 2 to the second power, that's 4. Then we would go ahead and do the multiplication in the numerator. Twelve minus ten is two, two minus two is zero. So as soon as we saw that the denominator here was going to be zero, we would have known without even having to do the numerator that the answer to this is undefined. We cannot divide by zero. So we've talked about this before, but just in case, to make it very clear, if we do 2, give myself more room, 2 divided by 0, there is nothing that I can multiply 0 by that will make 2. It has no answer, because we know, like, if we did 6 divided by 2, that the answer is 3, because they need to multiply to make 6. I remember it also that when the zero is under, 
the fraction bar. Under kind of looks like the word undefined right here, so that's how I remember. We can't have the zero under the fraction bar in the denominator. So our answer is undefined. Please make sure that you do not put no solution. If you put no solution, that will be absolutely incorrect. No solution means that you're solving for x, and that no solution means there is no number x can be. So that would not be the correct terminology to say no solution. The correct terminology is to say undefined. Okay, let's take a look at example three. This time we're going to replace the x with zero. So go ahead and evaluate this. We're gonna do the exponents first. Multiplication. And here we have zero, but this time it's in the numerator. And that's okay to have zero in the numerator. So zero divided by negative two is zero. So again, remember zero divided by negative two. Negative two times zero is zero. So it is possible there is a solution when we evaluate it, we get zero. So it's okay to have zero again in the numerator. It is not okay to have zero in the denominator. Okay, so now let's go ahead and review domain. So to find the domain, we need to remind ourselves what domain is. Domain is what are all the numbers that we can plug in for x into the function that we are given. So we talked about this a few weeks ago, and we said that when you have a fraction, we learned that you cannot have a zero in the denominator. So we need to take the denominator, it doesn't matter about the numerator, but the denominator cannot equal zero. So we need to find out and solve this to find out what number x can't be. So let's write this down. To find the domain of an ex rational expression, you set the denominator equal to zero and solve the resulting equation to find what x cannot equal, because this value will make the expression undefined. So let's go ahead and solve this. Let's go ahead and add eight. Then we're going to go ahead and divide by 4. And we get that x cannot equal 2. So make sure it's really clear why x can't be 2, because if you plug in a 2 in the denominator here, it doesn't matter what's on the top. But I'm going to have 7 on top, which is totally fine. But here we're going to have 8 minus 8, which is 0. So this is the only number that x can't be. So if we write our answer as an interval, or I mean set builder, let's start with that. We'd have x such that, so we'd have x such that x is a real number, and then we would put comma, but it can't be two. So that is set builder notation. Now for interval, I prefer to draw a picture first because I'm visual. So we said x can be anything but 2. So it could be any number over here on the left side of 2 and any number on the right side of 2 that's bigger than 2. So if we look, as we go to the left, it's going infinitely in the negative direction. And then here, it can't be 2. So that's what the parenthesis here means, that it cannot be 2. But it goes everything up to 2. Or x can be anything greater than 2. So from 2, and then to pause to the positive side. Now I want to make sure that that is very visual and that we understand that. So if I go to my graphing utility, or if I go to Desmos, and I graph that function we were given here, if we look at the answer we got here, it says that it goes infinitely to the left. So if you look at this graph, infinitely it goes to the left. And then as you move to the right 
here, you can see that we have 2 right here. This is where 2 is. And if I draw a dashed line, the graph, if you were to zoom in on it, the graph will never cross over 2. It will never have a point that touches 2. Okay, that's what this is saying. And then you could see here, it's going to 2, never crosses that line, and then it's getting, it's going to the positive infinitely. So it makes sense. It matches the algebraic answer that we got. Okay, let's go ahead and try this one. Again, we're asked to find the domain, so it doesn't matter what's up here, but the denominator can never equal zero. So we need to solve this equation here. Notice we have an exponent, so that is how we know we need factoring to solve this, because that's what we learned last chapter. So we need to go ahead and factor. Because it equals zero, we can start factoring. So we need to, since it's a trinomial and there's no GCF, we need to think of what multiplies to negative 14. But it has to add to negative 5 here. So it has to add to negative 5. So that means the bigger number needs to also be negative. So if we add this combination here, it adds to negative 5. So we're going to have x and x, and we have positive 2 and negative 7. Then we're going to set each factor equal to 0 to find out what it can't equal. So we would have that x cannot equal negative 2, and x cannot equal 7. Because if x was 7 or negative 2, you're going to have a 0 down there, and we don't want that. So our set builder notation would be x such that x is a real number, comma, but it cannot equal negative 2, comma, and it cannot equal 7. Now, if we write it as an interval, I like to draw a picture. So we have negative 2 and 7 on our graph, and it can't equal those numbers. But it can equal anything over here, anything in between, and anything over here on the right. So our interval is going infinitely to the negatives. And then it cannot equal negative 2, so that's why we have to put a parenthesis there. Or it could be anything here in between negative 2 and 7. Or anything greater than 7. So that would be our interval answer. So notice we have 1, 2, 3, and there were three different regions of shading. Whereas this problem here only had two regions of shading, so we only have two intervals there. So let's see if this makes sense and look at this graph here. So here's the graph if I graph it. Notice here it says it's going to the left infinitely, which it does, and then it says it approaches negative 2, so here's negative 2 right here. If I draw a dashed line here, it's not going to pass it. Okay, notice here we have a that there's part of the graph in between here, and here's 7 right here. So it will never pass this dashed line right here. So you have graph here, you have graph in between negative 2 and 7, and then here it goes from 7, so this graph is approaching 7, it's going to get close and close, and then it's going infinitely to the right side if we were to zoom out. So it matches what our picture shows here. Okay, let's try this last one here. So we look at this and we see a fraction, a rational function. So we take what's in the denominator and it can't equal 0, but do I have any variables that will make the denominator 0 in this problem? No. No matter what, the denominator is 5. The numerator doesn't matter. We could have any number up there in the, in the numerator. So this problem here, our answer is going to be all real numbers. Any number 
will work because when you plug in any number here and you divide by 5 it will always have an answer because we're never going to be able to divide by 0 when it's stuck being a 5 down here. So we would say set builder x such that x is all real numbers and as an interval anything can be x. Now if we take a look at the graph of this function you will see that it makes sense. It's going infinitely to the left here and as we go to the right it's going infinitely. We have a straight line here and if we think about it it makes sense. We could write this function as x over 5 minus 1 fifth so it's linear. The highest exponent is a 1. It makes sense that it's a line and it's going infinitely left and infinitely right.